हमारी सामूहिक ऊर्जा विकसित भारत का आधार बनेंगे इसी संकल्प के साथ आप सभी को योग दिवस की एक बार फिर बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं Well, welcome to this special broadcast. It is International Yoga Day today. Prime Minister Modi is in New York at the headquarters of the United Nations, where he will perform yoga with several prominent personalities. The event will be attended by delegates from over 180 countries. An estimated 250 million people around the world are expected to participate in the International Yoga Day festivities. Here is the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the General Secretary of the United Nations. On Yoga Day celebrations. मुझे विश्वास है योग से हम अपने स्वास्थ्य को भी बेहतर बनाएंगे और इन संकल्पों को भी आत्मसात करेंगे हमारा शारीरिक सामर्थ्य हमारा मानसिक विस्तार हमारी चेतना शक्ति हमारी सामूहिक ऊर्जा विकसित भारत का आधार बनेंगे इसी संकल्प के साथ आप सभी को योग दिवस की एक बार फिर बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं योग यूनाइट्स इट यूनाइट्स बॉडी एंड माइंड ह्यूमैनिटी एंड नेचर एंड मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल अक्रॉस द ग्लोब for whom it is a source of strength harmony and peace in a dangerous and divided world the benefits of this ancient practice are particularly precious yoga offers a haven of calm it can reduce anxiety and promote mental well-being it helps us to develop discipline and patience it connects us to our planet which so badly needs our protection and it reveals our common humanity helping us to understand that despite our differences we are one on this international day of yoga let us embrace the spirit of unity and resolve to build a better more harmonious world for people planet and ourselves well joining me now is our in-house yoga expert shibani garat shibani uh, thank you so much for joining us first up uh, tell us about this is a situation where uh, the international yoga day is coalescing very well with the united nations we have uh, the prime minister on a state visit to the us uh, performing yoga on international yoga day at the un headquarters uh, tell us about this significance uh, of yoga being embraced not just by india not just by yoga practitioners but by the un itself we heard the un general secretary saying that this is in fact uh, tantamount to a message of peace which is needed uh, in these times of tensions and unrest Yes Ashmit absolutely and as uh, you know uh, the prime minister said that uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam like uh, the world as one family so this is like a great display of that uh, where uh, you know as it is the, the world has been practicing yoga more so over the past couple of years uh, since the onset of the pandemic when everyone was home bound no access to any other outdoor facilities yoga is very fairly easy to practice uh, you know in your respective home. homes with the use of apps or uh, you know with the use of your laptop and you just can do it anywhere and it's, it's like a simple mat that you require to practice yoga so there has been an increase uh, in the number of people uh, the age groups have expanded from just uh, the younger generation uh, to more senior citizens as well as kids practicing yoga for the past uh, couple of years and then over the last 9 years uh, with this whole uh, international yoga day being celebrated on june uh, 21st it's such a fabulous message of taking our culture uh, you know across the world uh, this is something that we have never done before china has done it in a big way in the past where they uh, spoke about their culture extensively and took it to the world this is uh, you know our time uh, to take uh, yoga which you know has been rooted in the indian culture for such a long time and you know we see global leaders uh, doing it together so it's just a beautiful thing and now like you know since the increase in popularity of yoga from madonna to michelle obama to uh, you know 
all these politicians, diplomats practicing it over the world. It's such a wonderful message, Ashmit. That, in fact, was my very next question. You mentioned Madonna, you mentioned Michelle Obama. Is yoga cool now? Is that the thing we used to talk about, Pilates sessions? Yoga and has about how always that was been the very in cool. Thing? Is this perhaps the in thing? Uh, yoga has always been very cool. So I've traveled to quite a few places in the world. And, you know, even in uh, Eastern European countries and, you know, countries like Serbia or even Bulgaria, every nook and corner, uh, there is a yoga studio. And this is something that we have, uh, you know, kept away from. Uh, but because now world is taking such a notice and, you know, even Indians who used to be like very gym bound uh, have, uh, you know, started appreciating because also a lot of people around the world have taken yoga so seriously over the past past couple of years. Also, as I mentioned, because, uh, you know, a lot of people started accessing it through uh, apps like Sarva Yoga and all, which has uh, uh, investments of the likes of uh, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, people started doing it at home and then, you know, you saw them posting those workouts on Instagram and on uh, other such platforms. So, uh, like, also a lot of ge younger generation has taken it up uh, as well. So, yoga is definitely cool. It has been cool for a very long time. Over the past nine years, uh, since, uh, you know, this 170 countries back in 2015, when they uh, embraced and accepted that June 21st is going to be the yoga day, uh, more so the acceptance and the cool factor of yoga has just uh, increased, Ashmit. Well, interesting you point out that the cool factor has increased. In fact, if you scroll through your, at least when I scroll through my Instagram feed, all I find is a number of youngsters from the Gen, Gen Z uh, taking on yoga as a lifestyle. Uh, but speaking of taking it up as a lifestyle, Shibani, you've been uh, at work as, of course, the resident yoga expert of CNBC TV 18. Tell us about your experience. You were interacting with a yoga practitioner. What were the takeaways for you from, the early, from earlier today? So what I really like today or uh, this year is that, uh, you know, central government has instructed its employees uh, to incorporate a brief uh, why break you know, which is yoga break or uh, 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 at their chair or at their desk in office to uh, relax, relieve and, uh, you know, relieve the stress and enhance concentration at the workplace. This uh, Y break uh, protocol, in fact, introduced by Ayush Ministry includes simple yoga practices uh, which can be performed or asanas, pranayama, etc. that can be performed, breathing techniques that can be performed, including meditation that can be performed uh, at your desk or working from home if you have have long hours, uh, you know, that uh, you have at work. Also, long day at uh, work puts a lot of strain on your back. And um, if you have an aching back or any kind of stiffness, uh, here are a couple of exercises that, in fact, I performed with a yoga expert right here in office. And uh, you can do it anywhere, even sitting at your desk, on your chair, uh, which will definitely help you ease that strain in your back. Now, if you're someone who spends long hours at your desk, then back issues or spinal cord problems is something that you must have faced at some point in time in your life. But how do you stretch and strengthen your back while you are in your chair at your desk? To tell us more, we are joined in by YouTuber Yogini, Rashmi Ramesh. Rashmi, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you very much. So, for the back and spine, it's important to have mobility and movement throughout your spine. Sure. So, we'll do three simple exercises. Perfect. Focusing mostly on your cervical, your lumbar and a little bit of stretching to the side. Sure. Yeah? So you place your palms either on the handle of your chair or on your knees, however you feel comfortable. You inhale, slowly push your chest out and look up with your head. And as you exhale, slowly touch your chin to your chest and push your spine to the back. Do it a couple more times. Inhale, push your chest out, look up with your head. Exhale, slowly touch your chin to your chest and push your abdomen to the back and slowly come back to the center. We move on to doing sideways stretches. So you place your palm on the handle of your chair, raise your opposite hand up and stretch to the side. Feel like somebody is really pulling you sideways. Slowly inhale, come back to the center and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Raise your arm up, stretch to the side, tilt your head slightly upwards. Keep stretching. Slowly inhale. Come back to the center. Last one we'll do is a spinal twist. Sure. So you place your right palm on your left handle, left hand behind you, 
Look beyond your shoulder and twist. While you hold this, keep breathing. Slowly come back to the center and same thing on the other side. Left palm on your right handle, right arm behind you. Twist, look beyond your right shoulder and then slowly come back to the center. All right, this already feels so good. Thank you so much for sharing these uh, stretches and twists with us, Rashmi. My pleasure. So our producers are telling us that you don't even need a mat. Uh, a chair is good enough to strike a yoga pose. I'll try doing that, uh, but uh, to do that, uh, to avoid embarrassing myself, let's slip into a very short break. I'll come back and I'll try my hand at yoga in the office. Welcome back to this Yoga Day special. Now, anyone who works at the desk all day long knows how valuable small movements can be for their body. On this International Yoga Day, if you have missed your two-minute plank at home, then here are a few core strengthening yoga asanas that can actually perform, be performed at your desk or even on your chair. If you're sitting for long hours at your desk, you develop a weak back and along with that a weak core. So how do you strengthen your core muscles while you are on your chair? Tell us more. We are joined in by Yogini YouTuber Rashmi Ramesh. Show us some of the core exercises that you can do discreetly at work. <laughs> sitting on a chair. Yeah. So one is one of my favorites which is the boat pose yeah. sitting on a chair. So just start to raise both your legs up. Okay. And then slowly if you want to challenge yourself more, slowly raise both your arms up as well. Remember not to take back support, so don't lean back on your chair. Now, the longer you're able to do this, you'll feel it working on your lower abdominal muscles and also on your legs. So you keep your thighs really tight, you keep your toes pointed and you just keep holding this. So we'll hold it for five counts, yeah? Keep yeah, breathing. Sure. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Thanks. I have a question. Will it give me six packs? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but it will give you good posture. Perfect. Okay. The second exercise that we're going to do focuses on your oblique abdominal muscles. So you get both your hands behind your head and fingers interlock. And you raise your knee up but touch your opposite elbow to your knee. Sure. So slowly exhale and touch. Inhale and center. Exhale and touch. Inhale and center. Exhale, touch. Inhale, center. Exhale, touch. Inhale, center, center. Nice. So, so this was a nice twist to uh, the exercises, the core exercises that we are typically used to doing on a mat. Thank you so much for sharing these with us. My pleasure. Well, we're beginning to get visuals of the arena of the UN headquarters where the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi will be arriving shortly. He will be uh, performing yoga uh, on the International Yoga Day at the UN headquarters. Again, a hugely significant day, uh, not just for India, not just for the Prime Minister, but for yoga uh, at large. Uh, we'll begin to get updates and as we begin to see uh, the Prime Minister coming in, we'll share those updates with you. We'll share uh, his comments and words with you. He's expected to address uh, the gathering there as well. We'll get you his comments uh, as soon as the proceedings begin at the UN arena, at the UN headquarters. But uh, in continuing with our conversation, Shibani, from earlier, uh, do share with us uh, in terms of uh, adoption of yoga. You mentioned how uh, yoga is being done at work now, but for a very large part of the last three years, hmm. we had a situation where people were working from home and dealing with COVID, a pulmonary situation at the heart of it. Uh, is that uh, something that contributed towards perhaps greater adoption of yoga, people uh, becoming more conscious of lifestyle constraints, of lifestyle issues, and perhaps uh, moving to yoga uh, as a remedy, as a solution? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we were also restricted to like, you know, our four walls at home uh, with limited movement. You know, at least this is something that I have seen, uh, you know, and it's around me, like in, in my uh, uh, aunts and uncles who have, uh, you know, crossed a cert certain age, you know, they would easily uh, lead a very active life, going to the market, going for walks and suddenly all that movement uh, was restricted. And anyone and everyone from uh, your cardiologist uh, to uh, like your physiotherapist uh, especially in the older generation has suggested to include some movement and then yoga at home can be easily done uh, like you know very very uh, accessible as well uh, you can do it using an iPad or even your mobile phone on TV uh, like you know a lot of these uh, OTT platforms also have experts teaching yoga so that has become a part of life. Also breathing exercises because, uh, you know, the heart and the lungs were at the center of, uh, you know, this whole uh, pandemic where everyone's lung capacity was affected. Uh, you know, heart was becoming weak because of the lack of movement, la lack of cardiovascular activities that you typically do like walking. Uh, so a lot of breathing exercises that yoga has that also helped, uh, uh, you know, increase uh, uh, like, you know, their, I mean, improve uh, their health in general. Along with that, a lot of people were f uh, facing, uh, you know, mental health issues, uh, you know, being cut away from uh, their families or friends. So, uh, yoga in a way that it also helps you, uh, like, you know, be at peace, uh, you know, when you take that break, especially when you are working within the four, four walls of your house, not meeting your colleagues, not meeting your friends at work. It also gives you a nice break to relax, to meditate. So, all of this uh, really helped uh, people, uh, you know, accept yoga, include it as a part of, uh, you know, your life. But again, back to what we can do at work. So, uh, when we, let's say, passively sit in our chair, let's say, all day long, the muscles also of our legs can be very, very dormant, especially at work. Uh, so, on this International Yoga Day, here are a few yoga poses that I performed with the help of an expert to quickly get in some movement and blood flowing into your legs. Let's see. Now, sitting for long hours at your desk can make your lower body muscles very, very stiff. Today, uh, YouTuber Yogini Rashmi Ramesh is sharing some uh, postures, some exercises that will help you lengthen your lower body muscles and stretch them out. Yes, the first one we're going to do, seated on a chair again, is a hamstring swipe. So, you come to the edge of your chair and you straighten one leg out, so your heel is on the floor. You're going to lean forward and try to just swipe your arm under your 
feet and then come back down. So we'll do the same thing and this is nice to repeat a few times. Yeah. So you stretch your leg, slowly get your hands around, come back up, stretch and come back up. So why do you do this? This is exactly what I do while, uh, you know, while I'm just about to begin uh, my run. That's yeah. something that I do on the road and it's very easy to execute yeah. and easy to execute on the chair as yeah, well. Yeah, very easy. The next one we'll do is a glute stretch. Yeah. yeah. So you keep your ankle on your knee. So again, you can be seated on the edge of your chair. One hand on your knee, one hand on your ankle and we're going to slowly bend forward. So as you exhale, start to bend forward. This is like doing the pigeon pose but on a chair and keep going as low as you can go. The lower you go, the more stretch you'll feel on your glutes. Yeah, my glutes are talking to me. <laughs> and then you come back up. And of course, remember to do it on the other side. So you place your other ankle on your knee, one hand on your knee, one hand on your ankle. Bend forward, stretch. And then slowly as you inhale, come back up. Wow, that was a very nice stretch to my lower body muscles, my glutes, my hamstrings. Thank you so much for sharing these. My pleasure. Right, so the ninth International Yoga Day celebrations are about to begin. We're again getting those visuals. The visuals that you see there are that of the North Lawn Gardens of the UN in New York. That's the headquarters of United Nations. Those celebrations of uh, the ninth Yoga Day will be led by none other than the Prime Minister himself. He will be leading those celebrations. Uh, we're beginning to get visuals there. Uh, from the North Lawns of the United Nations. Uh, we, I'm also being told that Richard Gere has made it to the location. He will also be partaking as a, uh, as a part of these proceedings, as a part of the ninth International Yoga Day. And as Shibani was talking about, uh, that yoga is uh, not just uh, something that belongs to India, but is truly uh, something that has been embraced uh, by people the world over, uh, of different generations, of different countries, of different ethnicities. It is the great common denominator. That was also the message being put out uh, by the UN General Secretary that serving as a common denominator, this is the binding force uh, with the message of peace that needs to be embraced by people, especially in times of tension and uncertainty. These are visuals again. There you have on your monitor, on your screens, the Prime Minister making it to the North Lawns of the United Nations paying homage uh, to the bust of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, we will be beginning shortly with the celebrations of the 9th International Yoga Day. This, of course, will mark uh, for the first time that we have an Indian leader performing and celebrating the International Yoga Day uh, at the UN headquarters uh, itself. So again, an important day this. Uh, the Prime Minister marking it with his very presence. We have also a large number of stakeholders from the world of uh, business, from the world of health, from the world of economy, uh, who've in fact made it to the location. As we were mentioning a little while earlier, we had uh, stars, even Hollywood stars such as Richard Gere make it to the location. Those proceedings, as you can see on your monitor, are beginning as we speak. The last person on your monitor was the mayor from New York joining in with the Indian Prime Minister in beginning with the celebrations of the ninth International Yoga Day. Again, uh, it cannot be reiterated enough how significant a step this is uh, to have the Indian Prime Minister host the celebrations of the International Yoga Day at the United Nations headquarters. Those are the North Lawn visuals that you're getting. Again, people in the hundreds joining in uh, with these celebrations. Uh, truly a testament of yoga being adopted across uh, boundaries, across uh, borders, across ethnicities, being accepted by one and all. The Prime Minister there uh, arriving at the United Nations. We're only moments away now from uh, the celebrations beginning. Uh, these proceedings at the UN North Lawn will be led, will be headed uh, by the Prime Minister himself. He's expected uh, to perform yoga there, uh, where he will lead uh, the large number of people who've gathered. This, of course, is New York. Uh, this, is not, uh, uh, this is not a gathering uh, that we are accustomed to, that we're familiar with here. This is not uh, some kind of gathering uh, driven by any political force. Uh, this is primarily uh, a drive towards, a push towards yoga, that people are interested in, that people have joined and have decided to take part in. Uh, again, these celebrations to be led shortly by the Prime Minister himself. Uh, in fact, uh, on that count, uh, speaking of yoga being the common denominator, 
Uh, we reached out to a whole host of people. We also spoke uh, to a corporate leader who has been a proponent and an active practitioner of yoga for over two decades now, Rajiv Bajaj, Managing Director at Bajaj Auto. Let's, in fact, listen in to what he had to say about the benefits of yoga. I had the good fortune of being a student of uh, Guruji P.K. Sayangar for the longest time. And I think uh, yoga, uh, simply put, helps us to calm our breath and therefore to calm our mind. And this is why Guruji would say, let the breath uh, be your teacher. Yoga teaches us to cure what must not be endured and to endure what cannot be cured. Right, Mr. Rajiv Bajaj there. Uh, Shivani, uh, coming back to you, uh, we spoke about how yoga is now being adopted. Uh, tell us about what it does uh, to India's soft power, the world here, the United Nations, so if, the countries of yes. the United Nations are talking about hmm. yoga. What does that do to India's soft power? So as you were speaking, and this is uh, very historic uh, right now, it re also reminded me of the first uh, Yoga Day celebration where 36,000 people performed yoga together on Rajpath. I still uh, vividly remember those visuals where we created uh, Guinness Book of World Records to uh, uh, for the largest congregation to perform yoga together. So this is, uh, you know, way more historic uh, than that. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is our uh, time to showcase our culture to uh, display and to demonstrate uh, you know in front of the world leaders in front of corporate leaders who are many of them are yoga practitioners as I mentioned from Madonna to Tim Cook also performs uh, yoga by the way so in front of all of these world leaders global leaders to uh, showcase that this is what India has and this is what India has been doing for so many years so it is quite a statement out there and uh, as you rightly mentioned uh, demonstration of soft power so it's it's really, really amazing what we are doing right now. Right, Shibani, thanks a lot for that. Uh, with that, uh, we're heading into a small break. Uh, that's all the time that we have as a part of uh, the proceedings here of this broadcast. But stay tuned. We will continue with our focus of the International Yoga Day. It's about to begin shortly where the Indian leadership, Indian culture and India's soft power will be on display. Stay with us. News and updates will continue on the other side.